What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Center Beacon. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the new Scorpion robot with the Storm and Halo close-in brawling build. And we're going to compare that with the same robot, same pilot, same skills, but on the Cryo Rhyme setup. So two close-in brawler setups, burst damage on both of those. We're going to kind of take a look and see maybe which one's better or do they have sort of strengths and weaknesses depending on how you play and what scenario you're in. Will one suit you better than the other? Two or three of you, literally two or three of you might have seen my video last week taking a look at the same robot, the Scorpion robot, and I compared the Storm build, the shotgun build, versus the Atomizer build in case you were looking for maybe a mid-range option with the 500 meter Atomizers and Corker setup. I'll link to that video in this one. I'll put a little card up or something you can click on and kind of check that out if you're looking to see which build you'd like to invest in on your Scorpion. But that video kind of led to some questions about are Cryos better than Storms? Overall, I found Storms to be better than the Atomizer setup for my play style, but that led to some comments and things that got me thinking about cryo. So I figured I'd do a video and we'd take a look at the differences between the two and how they perform both in testing and in actual gameplay. If you don't have the Iskra pilot for this thing, don't worry about it. I recommend Adrian anyways. There went the visual effects budget for this quarter. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. We're just gonna do a couple quick rounds of testing here against a leech. You can see the cryo build on the left, the storm build on the right. All we're doing is translocating in and we're gonna fire all of our weapons in the built-in weapon until the robot turns around and identifies the threat or until it's dead. The leech doesn't have much meat on the bone, so it was kind of a really close test, so I figured I'd go with something a little more tanky. I did the Fenrir here. The Fenrir has the Nicholas Woden Sun pilot and basically all of the tanky skills you'd expect. So we're just gonna sit here and try to chew through this thing as rapidly as possible. I just edit out the downtime on the ability recharge. That Fenrir also has three heavy armors. You can kind of already start to see that the Storms definitely are dealing more burst damage. You can see we've already got the Fenrir down there. I don't think that was really in question, but I had a lot of people say that like, oh, Cryos are better and they're going to perform better. So that could be true. You are getting a damage benefit off of the Cryo stacking up and freezing your target. So we're going to kind of put that to the test in the gameplay clip to come. However, I still prefer the Storms and think it's the most bursty setup that you can get. So at this point in the video, some of you may be asking yourselves, did he just say most bursty? I'm going to tell you that I did not actually say that, and I will edit it out so you won't be able to prove it either, so don't even try it. This is why people don't make videos at 5 a.m. So this match ended up being a pretty decent demonstration of both these builds, the Cryo and the Storm build. I normally don't do uninterrupted gameplay just because I'm not trying to make you sit through like the little movie of my most recent match. I like to usually edit this stuff, but this was actually a pretty decent run or a pretty decent demonstration of this thing's abilities. So this initial guy right here, he was really kind of unsuspecting, not really prepared for what was coming at him with this new robot and that kind of burst damage. The crowds worked great there, no issues. However, what develops in this game is a pretty cool 1v1 against me and whoever that fellow was. And, and also on that note, I just got to say, like, great job on this guy, this pilot here. This next little one versus one battle that we have is a really great solo matchup. It was kind of just him and I going back and forth over here. He had the, looks like the Ardent Blitz, most likely with the pilot and the damage mitigation ability. And it was a really great back and forth, kind of showcasing the merits of both of those robots and, and both of those builds. It was actually pretty cool. So that's why I'm not editing any of this out. I'm just going to kind of run with this and take it all the way through both robots, both builds. So you can kind of see and judge for yourself. Maybe this cryo build suits your play style or the way you like to run it. What I did notice in here, this is actually after I think the 6.2 sort of hotfix update. You can see a big lag spike there. There's still like 
a lot of lag in the game that is really unfortunate and forced some errors on my part and just kind of made this harder to do, particularly with the rockets. Crow rockets are supposedly fixed. I'm still not perceiving them in quite the same way that they were prior to the 6.2 or whatever the update was that broke them and kind of made them behave a little bit differently, whether that's splash or trajectory. I get a little bit of help from a friend there, a little bit of a distraction, but this guy's still hanging tough in there. With that damage mitigation ability up, plus the lag, it's real hard for me to get a handle on him with these cryos. During this sort of 1v1, I really kind of wish I had had the shotguns, but since I was trying to take a good hard look at the cryos, I decided to run that build first. I think if I had had the shotguns, I probably would have been able to dispatch this guy a little bit sooner. But the cryos were effective. I mean, they're good, no doubt. I'm gonna throw a phase here because I don't have my ability and I kinda just wanna recharge some rockets. And I'm not too worried about an Inquisitor. So good fight so far over here on this part of the map. Really good demonstration of this thing's ability. You can see how handy and really crucial it is to have the mechanic ability on this. Now I also have the Iskra pilot, so every time you use your ability, the backstab ability, Iskra is going to heal the bot for X a percentage for X amount of time, depending on like the level of the bot or something like that. This is where the scorpion really shines. I can zip into this beacon here, kind of like a forward blink as if you were a phantom. And that guy never, I'm not even sure he really knew I was there, which is fine. I just wanted the beacon anyways. And then here comes my friend back for another crack at that beacon kind of in the middle of all those buildings there that we've been going back and forth over. So instead of translocating back, I basically just decided to hang out here, make this my new home. And that's what's kind of cool about the Scorpion ability is you can just kind of skip across the map. I could have gone back if it suited me, but it, it really didn't. So I decided to hang out there. So moving target, a lot of those rockets are missing initially. So a defense against this thing is just never stay static. Now that more and more of these are being introduced into the game, you're going to want to keep moving because even with rockets and even though the translocation ability puts you point blank directly behind the target, a moving target still becomes difficult to hit, particularly with rockets. So try not to hold still in these games if you can, because more and more of these scorpions are popping out all over the place due to giveaways and popping up in those chests and stuff as a reward for the tokens and whatnot. Shotgun build now. The Halo simply has more damage than the Gust. So that's why I'm running it. You can't lock anything down with that single Halo, sadly. But it does do a little bit more damage, and that's what we're looking for here. With the pilot skills, again, the more I play these things, the more I realize that you don't quite need as many damage skills, perhaps, as I have on these right now. You could probably back some of those off in favor of speed because both the cryo and the shotgun build give you plenty of damage, except for maybe like here with a Titan. That thing is, you're going to have a real hard time taking a big chunk out of that guy unless he's super under leveled anyways. But don't be afraid to sacrifice a couple of the damage abilities to get some speed or maybe something else that you find useful for the pilot skills on this robot. I feel like if you run the Adrian Chong pilot, you've got 5% right there. You could almost skip every other damage ability if you wanted to. Titan's in the center there, kind of hard to contend with with any robot. Got a kid coming at me here. I feel like the shotguns on a kid, probably a pretty good advantage on my part, so I'll try the ability here. Get in point blank right behind him. I think he already used his stove ability. You can see that lag popping up there again. Super unfortunate. Kill stealer back there, but I'll forgive that guy for now. This game is pretty much well in hand. Got the beacon lead. There's my friend again and his Titan. Just uh, two scorpions for this one. That's all I ended up using. Didn't really need anything else. Had a pretty decent team. I think it was pretty well balanced for the most part. Kind of hitting those guys at range there. This thing is really about wrapped up. 
personally, the way I see the bot in the build and the ability, I, I like the storms. I like the shotgun setup. You get in there, burst it down, and you get right back out. The cryos can do a lot of damage, but they take too long to unload, in my opinion. So for me, that kind of settles the debate of are cryos better, are storms better. Now, if you have cryos leveled, then by all means, run them. It's not like you're going to be at a massive disadvantage. But I think if you want to truly use this thing as it was intended, run the storms, run the gust, run the halo, and use a shotgun build to really take advantage of all that immediate burst damage. Okay, that's all I'm doing for this video. I hope these comparison videos are helping you out. And if they are, let me know in the comments. And don't be afraid to share these things or tell somebody else. I really appreciate the patronage. And as always, I will see you next time at the Center Beacon.